Hey everyone, I just want to make um, this video, which I, I may turn into a series on uh, becoming a disciplined trader, mainly just speaking from my own experiences thus far, you know, my, at this point, three years of trading and what's helped me and, you know, how to overcome some some common issues. Um, again, I'm thinking of turning this into to a series because I think there there is a, a ton to be covered on this subject and, you know, obviously what works for some people may not work for others. Everyone has, you know, different emotional tendencies and everything that impact their trading. So I'm just going to go over um, a couple quick ones here and uh, maybe just let me know in the comments if you want to see some more of this stuff. So getting started, I guess the, the main question to ask is why do we even overcomplicate trading? Because in theory, it's really an extremely simple procedure, mathematically speaking. You know, if you if you were to stick to a strategy that has a proven, you know, 50% win rate, say that's back tested over whatever, one year, five years, 10 years, and you consistently trade that while taking, you know, a two to one risk to reward or greater, um, then statistically speaking, you should be profitable over time. If you take a large enough number of trades, and I'm not talking about, you know, 10, 20, 30, I'm talking about like 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. Statistically speaking, you will be profitable over time, but it's definitely way harder to actually trust that because, you know, when we're taking this day by day, it's it's very easy to let even one or two bad trades kind of affect our mentality and, and, you know, think that this isn't going to work out, the, the strategy isn't working um, and all that. But really, it just comes down to our emotions that make this process uh, a lot more complicated. You know, it, it causes us to take dumb setups, um, trade based on impulse instead of logic, which I've done countless times, and um, just overall not really trust the probability of you know a statistical edge over a large series of trades i think it's really important to understand yourself and you know what emotions are driving your trades and your most common mistakes you know chances are your mistakes are rooted in emotional decisions and, and i'll i'll bring up a few really common ones later and how they all kind of tie together to um, a few central ones but th they're really most often not the fault of your trading system. Like a lot, a lot of new traders will, you know, blame a strategy and, uh, you know, if one's not working out, they'll hop to a new one and then that one's not working out, so they'll go to another one and that cycle just keeps repeating until, you know, you finally realize that, you know, it, it might be you that's obstructing your trading success and often that's what it is. And of course, this is assuming that you've committed to using a proven strategy that you back tested yourself. You know, you can trust when these edges appear, you know your criteria for entries and exits and all that. So just being able to trust your system, you should know that, you know, a lot of the mistakes that come up are um, emotionally driven. Though I've personally found that journaling is really important, and I will say, you know, I've interacted with, you know, dozens of, you know, successful traders on Twitter and everything, and for the vast majority, uh, I think, uh, would agree that journaling is kind of the key to, you know, not necessarily their success, but, you know, overcoming a lot of the begin of the beginner mistakes that a lot of us um, will fall to. So if you already journal your trades, you're probably aware of the most common mistakes that you make, whether that is, you know, um, pushing your stops up too early or, you know, entering impulsively, not according to your rules, whatever. You probably already know, um, you know, where you're coming from most of the time on your on your bad trades. And that's a good thing. But if you don't frequently journal the trades and you're you're wondering why you aren't doing as well as you'd like, you know what's preventing you from getting to that next level, I really think journaling is the, is the first step to getting better. So I, I would suggest try going through your last, say, 20 trades, depending on your frequency. If you trade a ton, make it 50. If you don't trade a lot, make it, you know, I think 20 is a good start. Um, but ask yourself what you did well and what you could have done better from each trade and try to draw some some commonalities from all that. Um, I know that that's usually pretty easy for me to do is to find some common mistakes between between my recent trades. So, you know, even if your if your most common mistakes aren't clear, tr try going through another twenty trades and so on. Just keep repeating that process until you you you're kind of aware of the biggest mistakes that you're making. Some questions to ask once you have those answers from journaling are, you know, was this a valid setup in the first place? Did I enter and exit according to the rules of my strategy? Did I size the position properly or did I oversize? Um, did I respect my stop loss? Did I trail it too tight on and all that stuff? 
And from there, you know, once you answer those questions, you can start to consider changes that could benefit your whole system and, you know, form a, a broader corrective action plan for your trading, um, you know, and just ask questions like, you know, what would my results look like if I limited myself to a certain number of trades per week? If I didn't trade during the choppiness that is lunch hour, oftentimes, if I, you know, walk away for a certain amount of minutes after a bad trade and all that. And you don't need any special software to be able to do this. I mean, one thing I did, even just as recently as a few months ago, I just wasn't doing as well as I'd like. And so I exported all my trades to a CSV file, um, imported them into Google Sheets, and then, you know, tried to just draw some really basic statistics from the data that it gave me. Like, you can do a simple function like looking at your entry times versus exit times, um, and then subtracting one from the other, you know, what's your average trade duration? Um, how long was it before you entered the next trade? And for me, that was kind of a key one because I saw that I was um, trying to revenge trade a lot at times. And so, um, which we'll get into later how I corrected that, but uh, it's just really basic stuff to see, you know, some of the, some of the core issues. So some of my personal mistakes um, that I observed from journaling were that, you know, my largest losing days had much more trades than my winning days. So that told me that the higher frequency of trades was me, you know, desperately attempting to make up for for losses that kicked off the day. I just, you know, really wanted to end the, tra the, the day rather um, green and not really uh, accept the consequences of those losses. And um, another one is that many losses would occur frequently after one another. Again, revenge trading, constantly reversing positions just not wanting to accept the fact that I, I had a bad trade and, and should be looking, um, should be remaining patient and looking for good setups. Another was that, you know, trading the, the New York Open for, for me was proving to be consistently unprofitable. Uh, I think the, the higher volatility would often lead to more emotion and uh, impulsive trading. Um, then another was that many break-even trades eventually went on to be winners. And from that, I kind of concluded that I was just trailing my stop loss too tight. You know, there were a few weeks where I ended nearly break even, but you know, if, if I just kept my stop at at the initial place I put them, then you know, the week would have been you know a, a fantastic. And so my personal solutions to these problems, when I started limiting myself to three trades per day, I had a definitive limit for my downside. So there was no reason to take you know twenty trades on the day. If I was already red and trying to climb back into the green after three trades, I you know shut it down, um, just stop for the day, and uh, I really think it helped improve my focus on high quality setups. And another one I implemented was a 15 minute cool down period after every trade, so limiting the temptation to chase after a failed trade or reverse positions or you know if you're missing out all that stuff. Um, that one helped a lot because I I knew I could just you know walk away, collect my thoughts and uh, come back better for the next one without carrying the emotion of the one that just uh, occurred. Another easy one to implement was just no trades before 9.45. You know, the data was just telling me that from 9.30 to 9.45 Eastern Standard Time, I just wasn't performing well. I was trading impulsively, so I just eliminated that time altogether. And, you know, I don't even um, open my charts until about, you know, 9.40, 9.45. And lastly, my stop loss, um, again, I, now I just set it and forget it because of, you know, what I observed from previous weeks where I was just trailing it too tight. I, I just want to be able to give the trade sufficient room to work and, uh, you know, implementing that has really helped a ton. You know, I'm not micromanaging my, my trades as much and, you know, th there are arguments to be made about trailing your stops and everything, but I'm personally a fan of trailing stops. I think it's a good idea. But for me personally, at, at this stage, you know, I'm trying to just master my execution and I don't want to be micromanaging uh, my, my trades too much. I just want to be sure that I'm taking quality opportunities in the first place, see how that works. And then from there, I should be able to, you know, kind of fine tune my strategy in, in terms of um, trailing my stops and just, I, I think it, it falls into kind of like refining, um, you know, the, the last details of your setup. I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a, an extremely crucial thing to do if you're already trading with, with a proven system and a proven edge and all that. So another, another thing I did was, you know, to avoid taking bad trades, I also started using a checklist in which I, you know, 
I have like a whiteboard uh, right next to my desk where I have to physically check off all the criteria of a certain setup to ensure that it's a valid trade before I enter. Um, so this just helps me, you know, not really trade impulsively and just make sure that you know everything I'm looking there is on the chart. Um, just because like, you know, obviously a bad trade is just one click away. Uh, if you make impulsive trading decisions, consider implementing some sort of, you know, extra limitation before you enter a trade um, so that you can stay focused on the best setups. I, I personally really like the, the whiteboard idea. I mean, it, it's a little like 11 by 14 inch um, whiteboard that I just keep right next to my computer. It has all the main setups I look for um, and all the criteria associated with each one broken down into like three or four steps. So, you know, you know as a trade develops, I'm just kind of continuously checking those off making sure that um, that it's a valid trade before I actually get in. So after your journaling, even if you figure that your biggest problems differ than mine, you know, I, I guarantee that they're all rooted in at least one of the following common trading fears, which is fear of missing out, the fear of losing, fear of being wrong, and fear of letting a win turn into a loss. And this is all defined from um, Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas, uh, a really great book on trading psychology um, that I think everyone should read as a trader. Um, but my fears based on those mistakes, you know, when I was desperately attempting to make up for my losses, that's a fear of being wrong. When I was revenge trading and constantly reversing positions, that's a fear of losing and also being wrong. And the higher volatility leading to more emotion and impulsive trading, that's fear of missing out. You know, I don't want to miss that next trade. I'm always trying to chase. And trailing my stop loss too tight, fear of letting a win turn into a loss. So the general solutions to this stuff, and you know, the if you're missing out, the best way to combat this, in my opinion, is to create an extremely strict rule-based strategy that greatly eliminates the chance of taking impulsive trades. So similar to how I have all my stuff spelled out on a checklist, I know exactly what I'm looking for. And, you know, if something doesn't meet that criteria, then I'm not taking that trade. So, you know, I think a lot of us have kind of mental checklist we look for to see if a trade is good or not. But if you are impulsively trading, then you know how much your emotions can distort that perspective when you're in the moment. And, you know, a, a setup that isn't valid in hindsight will look, you know, great in the moment just because you want to get in that trade. But, you know, you can eliminate that by just creating a, an extremely structured system um, defining how you trade. And so the fear of losing and being wrong, I think that really comes down to just learning to trust your edge via your rule-based system, so it kind of ties into each other. Um, ensuring that you're only executing on the best setups, you know, because it, again, it comes down to just the the probability of it all and the statistical edge. You know, if you're taking those two to one trades, fifty percent win rate, you're gonna be successful in the long run. But you know, what you can do is review the results of say your last twenty trades and see what could be improved if you're you know, if you're still repeating those same mistakes, how can you mitigate them and all that? Um, but your fear of losing will be, you know, kind of exacerbated when you take subpar setups that aren't what you're looking for from your your structured system. Um, you know, to, to paraphrase Mark Douglas from Trading in the Zone, if you're operating with a, a proven trading edge and you truly believe in the probability of being profitable in the long run, then you should not fear losses. You should instead look forward to losses as it means you're that much closer to a win, statistically speaking. And again, that just comes down to really having a, a solid system and being able to execute that over and over again um, at, you know, at the highest degree. You know, and one thing we have to accept about trading is that we will be wrong and we will have losses constantly. And so on the left is a, is a great tweet from Stockerties after I, I asked um, him and a, and a bunch of other traders you know, how they kind of deal with losses. And he said, you know, I try to treat my trading account as a separate entity from my bank account. I think of trading as a business and I'm both the CEO and an employee. As an employee, you want the CEO to take the necessary risk to put the most money in your pocket. You have to trust the businessman in you. So again, you know, you have to take risk in trading, um, you know, no pain, no gain, however you want to say it. It's just inherent to to trading itself. You're, you're going to lose Constantly, you need to be comfortable with that. And the way you can grow to be comfortable with that is just by practicing solid risk management. You know, you shouldn't be afraid to lose whatever it is, 1% of your account, whatever that number may be. Um, you just have to play around with it and see what works for you. Try to use a number that 
doesn't have an emotional attachment. Because because when I tweeted at him and a bunch of traders, what I was really asking was that you know when I'm in losing trades, I'm equating it to tangible things. Like if I'm losing, um, you know, say three hundred dollars, then you know I'm subconsciously thinking like, oh man, that's like a, a, an entire car payment that I lost. But you know, you can't really think like that because it's it's completely separate from your your personal finances, or it should be. You should definitely not be trading with more than more than you can afford to. And then lastly, the fear of letting a win turn into a loss. Again, I think that just comes down to trusting your edge. Uh, when you're back testing your strategy, you should make note of where your theoretical stops would be and how to trail them, if at all. Um, you know, I've, I've personally found that I perform better without trailing my stops. I think, you know, uh, I will one day want to refine my system to be able to to trail them a little bit better and let my winners run. Um, but you know, I think as a beginner, I, I don't think trailing stops should be a a huge issue if you're already using a, a proven system. And so some ideas of, of how to create that rule-based system, um, I'll leave off with this. I'm just using ICT as an example. You know, if you look at the 2022 mentorship model, what are you looking for before you take a trade? You want a sweep of a decent liquidity level, buy side liquidity or sell side. You want a energetic market structure break back under buy side liquidity or back over sell side, coupled with displacement and you know, together this indicates just a, a willingness for the market to want to reverse in the direction of some higher time frame bias and reach for some some other liquidity level. And you would obviously want to see some fair value gap for entry on a lower time frame. And so some questions to ask yourself if you're developing this system is you know what differentiates a sweep versus a run of liquidity? And for, for me, this is like if price is over buy side liquidity and you're constantly looking for reversals um, for, for short plays to come back down, but we're still over at that major level, are you going to go short or are you going to try to play the trend and look for lower highs to take you back higher? Um, that was a big one for me. Like if we're running liquidity, then we want to reach higher. And so how do you recognize that? And, you know, another question could be what determines an energetic structure break? What does that look like? You know, pick out examples, you know, um, draw them next to your next to your computer so you have a visual. Just be aware of what that looks like so that you're not taking setups with, you know, a, uh, a mediocre structure break. And yeah, another could be what time frames should you be looking for for fair value gaps? What time frames are you using in the first place? Are you using the hourly 15 and 5? Are you using the the daily, the four hour, and the one hour? You you kind of have to decide these things beforehand so that so that your your system can be as structured as possible. And so you know, again, I'll just leave off with that. You know, I think maybe that could be a, a good second video to go into is how exactly would we create this rule based system. What would that look like and um, how could we benefit from it? But yeah, if, if, if you like this video, if you want to see more of that, please be sure to let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.